Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Welcome on a Friday night. You all don't need to do anything. Uh. Obviously not, uh, right? <laughs> today, today, we are all still in lockdown, right? We are still supposed to uh, stay at home. I know we are being announced today that we are tomorrow uh, EMCO is going away. But EMCO go away tomorrow, MCO come back, right? So still have to stay at home and still stay, stay safe, right, everybody? But as we are staying at home, Nothing to do, right? That's why, you know, at Owner Circle, we've been hosting this Leading in Crisis every two weeks on a Friday for the last couple of uh, weeks. And we've actually been doing this for the whole of the last one and a half years. And really, it's just to get some knowledge with each other to going through these times. I know we are all staying at home. I know we still have a lot to do. You know, I, I was just having a conversation earlier with our speaker and we, we were just talking about how much more work and how burnt out that I got. So I personally got burnt out uh, last Sunday. And it was just, I just went through two full weeks of uh, back-to-back work because during the EMCO, everybody expects that, oh, you have time for anything, right? You're not going anywhere, you, anyway. <laughs> so you have time to answer my question. You have time to have a call. So that's what we, we have been going through. So I hope that from tomorrow onwards, things will get better. We see the vaccinations being increased. Um, and, you know, I'm just looking forward to us getting back to some form of a new norm very, very soon now. All right, so I just wanted to just welcome everybody. Thank you for spending your Friday night with us. And I hope that uh, this is a Friday well spent as we go through some knowledge and lessons to increase our mind capacity, to increase our knowledge, and to learn something along the way. So in today's Leading and Crisis, I would just want to welcome those that are joining us in Facebook. Right, uh, those that are joining on Facebook now, this stream in Facebook is only going to last for about 20 minutes. So, do join us here in Zoom. I'm sure there's a registration link on the comments box. The reason is because we can't really control what happens on Facebook and who is there. So, we want to have some very um, deep interactions, and we are going to do that in Zoom. So, if you want to ask any questions, come to the Zoom channel and we can ask those questions here in the Zoom channel. Okay, so don't stay on Facebook, come over here. And we can talk to each other over here, right? Now, for those that are joining us here in Zoom, right? As usual, with any leading in crisis, you can ask any questions that you want. I've clarified with the speaker, it's boundaryless. So it's boundless, boundless, right? Very good, right? Boundaryless. Uh, So ask any questions. How do you do that? You ask your questions in the chat window or better still, you ask it in the Q&A section. So there's a Q&A button at the bottom of your Zoom chat your Zoom window, click the button Q&A and then click on it and then you can ask your questions there. I will be monitoring the Q&A and at the end of the middle of to the end of today's webinar, I'll be asking, I'll be bringing those questions out and I'll be asking our speaker here for tonight. All right. So again, once again, uh, welcome. Invite your friends, tag your friends. You know, we don't do this very often. We only do this once every two weeks. So I hope that, uh, you know, you can invite anybody that you want into it. This is a free webinar, right? There's no cost to this. We just hope that it can impact someone. And, you know, we we hope that it impacts you guys that are joining us here tonight. All right. Okay, without further ado, we want to get straight into getting some value, right? We are are so pumped up on a Friday night, right? Because why? Tomorrow is weekend, right? And tomorrow I'm getting my second dose vaccine. So I'm quite excited, right? I'm not very excited about the side effect, but I'm excited that I'm going to be fully vaccinated tomorrow. So for those of you who are already fully vaccinated, I'm a bit jealous, but only be jealous for another 24 hours until I get the jab. Then not jealous really, right? Then I'll be part of your gang, your gang, summer gang, right? Okay, now I want to introduce and I'm really, really very excited uh, to bring on a good good friend of mine. I'm very excited to introduce uh, Elizabeth Hall. Now Elizabeth, she's the founder a master trainer at Elizabeth International Academy of Image and Style. And I can tell you, right, for those of you who are here with us today, she has coached some Hollywood stars in their image brand curation, right? Um, I, I'm not a Hollywood star, right? so I don't qualify. But she, she's very qualified in that sense. She is so qualified, she graduated in the consumer behavior and marketing. She's a certified image consultant, a certified color consultant, a transformational color practitioner, a body language trainer, and even a certified handwriting analysis practitioner. 
I have to pause for a while, right? Catching my breath, right? So many certifications. And it's so amazing to have her here tonight. Now, with this amazing knowledge, of course, she's gone on to build an illustrious career from sales to strategic marketing over the last two decades and now living out her passion over the last seven years in helping men and women to discover their true, authentic selves. Now, incidentally, I met Elizabeth as we are both facilitators of a program named Authentic Lives, uh, helping people discover their true self, right? And she, you know, through my interactions with her, that is, she's really not about image branding, right? She's not just about, oh, what should you wear? What is the colors you sh should you wear? That, to her, I mean, my interaction with her, that's just a surface. Your true image actually comes within, from your heart. And I'm really excited for her to be able to share these style things. Uh, we've, been, we've been friends ever since and I'm really excited for her to be able to speak to you guys here today. And the topic that she's really passionate about is to really stand up and stand out, right? How do we look at five image branding techniques to really stand out from our competitors, especially during this time of the lockdown period? We really need to use these times the best we can. So I hope that she can give us some value over here. Everybody, please join me to welcome my friend, Elizabeth Hall. Hello, hello. Thank you, Ray. As you were introducing the speaker, I was so excited. I was like, who is that speaker? Who is that speaker? You know, it's so impressive. And then Manatao, it was me. Thank you anyway for the amazing so introduction. You, la, right? okay. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for, for coming on uh, tonight. So uh, what can we expect tonight? What are you, what are you going to be sharing with us tonight? I, I'm, I'm excited. I still don't know yet, right? <laughs> Basically, first of all, is that I'm going to share a mindset change on how, you know, the public or, you know, all the entrepreneurs, especially business owners, a mindset change on how you look at image. Because if you don't change that mindset, nothing that I'm going to share tonight will work for you. So wow. I hope, you know, for the next half an hour or one hour or so, uh, we're going to dive deep into what is actually image branding. Wow, wow, wow. I'm super excited. Okay, everybody. Lisa, I'm going to let you do your thing. Everybody, I just want to remind you guys, we are taking questions. So uh, put your questions in the Q&A window or the chat window. I will collect all those questions. And when I come back, uh, I will help you guys to ask those questions to Elizabeth. Okay, Elizabeth, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. So let me share my screen. Thank you for the amazing introduction, Ray, and good evening. I can't tell you how excited I am to have this opportunity to be in your midst today. Um, I was just telling the team, you know, the backup team at the back, the tech team, and also Ray, I have heard so much uh, impressive report about Owner Circle, and as I was, you know, uh, in the evening, I scroll through Facebook, uh, your advertisements comes out, you know, and I'm really, really excited to be here uh, and to meet all of you virtually. But before I dive deep into our topic tonight, I really want to express my appreciation to Ray for inviting me to share my passion and my calling and not forgetting Joey, uh, who has been working behind the scene, planning, you know, um, uh, sending me messages that I'm too busy to reply. I'm so sorry, Joey, and making all this possible. Uh, thank you to Jenny as well, being the tech team behind. Thank you everyone for your time and effort. Um, during our rehearsal, I heard from Joey. She, she mentioned that, you know, so far in uh, Owner Circle, there's so far no trainers or coaches have shared this topic of image branding. When I heard that, I'm not sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, on one hand, it is good because I get to be the first consultant to share on this topic. Um, bad because it's, I mean, it sounds bad to me because this shows that still many entrepreneurs out there yet to see the importance of image branding and how your image brand can impact your life and businesses. So, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure which angle to look at it, good or bad. Um, so let me get some of your responses here. You know, if you are joining us on Zoom or even Facebook, if, you know, we are still on Facebook, you, you just, you know, uh, comment on the chat box. Share with me what image branding is to you. Or when I mention image, 
what is the first thing that come to mind that you know about image branding, right? So feel free to use the comment box because it really helps me to understand how the public or you know, uh, people that is not in the image industry, how do you see image branding? What is image branding to you? Now, in my many years in, uh, in this image industry, I always ask this question. Clients, you know, that come to me or when I'm giving a talk. So I will ask this question, what is image to you? And without fail, a lot of the responses, yes, Christine says presence, trust, impression. I love this group. So far, no one say uh, uh, fashion and trends, yeah? No one say, um, yeah, how you want people to perceive you, impression. I love, I love this, yes. But sadly to say, throughout these seven years, I have people replying, image means fashion. Image means, you know, what you wear. Image means your appearance. Image means, you know, a certain status, a certain, uh, you know, uh, 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 influencer, you know, that kind of, 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 of look that you need to have. Is it right or is it wrong? It is not wrong, actually, but appearance and style is only a fraction of what image branding means, okay? In order to maximize this full benefit of image branding, I always say there are two questions you need to have clarity. Once you see this clearly, then you will know how to move on to the next step. So the first thing is, what is image branding? Okay, what is image branding? Because you need to know what is image branding. And the next question is, why? Why image branding? Okay, so the what. First, I'm not sure whether you, you are familiar with this, you know, uh, 55, 38, 7 rules. Professor Albert Maribian, a pro, uh, uh, he's a professor a psychology professor at University of California in LA. He did a study in year 1967, if I'm not mistaken, and came up with this theory of 55, 38, 7 rule of communication. And in his, in his study, it was shown that there are three core elements of effective communication. Now, you must be wondering, uh, image branding, just now you were mentioning about image branding and now communication. I will link it for you to see. Now, these three essentials elements, uh, 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 Dr. M uh, Albert Marabin argues, account for how we convey our liking or disliking of another person. In the same way too, these are the three elements, how others form their first impression of us. 55% comes from your appearance and your gesture, body language, 38% comes from your tone of voice and only 7% comes from your actual spoken words. So that is to say 93% of how people understand what you want to communicate comes from non-verbal, your appearance, gesture and your tone of voice. When I found out this, I was like, what? You know, whenever I'm giving a presentation, I spend so much time in crafting the words, crafting, you know, what to say. But if we were, you know, if any of you were like me in the past, spending so much time on what to say, on what to, you know, exactly what to, how to present, and forgot the 93% of the non-verbal, we lose a big part of convincing people about what we want to communicate. Okay, so that is to say, Image branding is a non-verbal communication. Are you surprised? Image branding is a non-verbal communication tools that you can use. Non-verbal communication of what? Okay, so this is, we are still at what, okay? Image branding is your brand message for the world to see. 
and it should represent the authentic elements of who you are, your calling, what you stand for, your passion, and basically your story for the world to see and to hear. Now, this leads me to the second question of why image branding? Why we need image branding? Whether you like it or not, we are all here to sell something. Okay, for business men and business women like us, uh, we are here either selling uh, products, you know, or products, services. If you are trainers, coaches, you are here to sell training programs, you know, coaching programs. Um, if you are not in business, you are still selling. In politics, you are selling a cause, a movement for change. Okay, you are selling an idealism, an idea. You are selling your leadership to gain followers. Everywhere we turn to organizations and individuals around us, we are selling. And in order for the public to buy your ideas, you need to first create impression, okay? And this impression has to lead to engagement. See, from the slide you see, impression has to lead you to engagement. If you're just merely concerned about creating an impression, a good impression, then you are out there to impress people. We are not in a business of impressing people. I mean, I'm one that, you know, a, a big rebel. I'm, I don't care about what people uh, uh, think of me, you know, their opinion of me. I'm, I'm quite self-sufficient. So your opinion of me really doesn't, re, uh, uh, mat, you know, uh, uh, affect me that much. But what matters to me is I want to engage with you. I want to reach out to you. I want to understand you. I want to see how can I help you. Impression has to lead to engagement. And engagement has three important elements. That first, in order to create engagement, you have to create attraction. That people are attracted, naturally attracted to you. And from attraction, you leads to conversion, whether it's an idea, whether it's a lifestyle, whether it's a training, whether it's a, a product that you're promoting. You have to lead them to conversion and not just that. You have to lead them to retention. Your impression doesn't, you know, if your impression doesn't lead to engagement of all these three, basically you're just shock subduing. okay? Might as well you don't waste time, you don't waste money because in order to build image as many other aspects of branding, you need investment and it's costly, okay? I'm not going to uh, uh, lie to you that, you know, it, it takes nothing to create a brand image. It takes a lot, a lot. It takes your time, it takes investment, it takes money. So, but the question is, is it worth it? Okay, so if you're here because you are serious, serious to go to the next level of attracting your target market, you're serious to convert them to, you know, from not just being spectator, but to being a participant, to participate in your life, in your business, in your calling, and not just contented with that, don't stop there, but to retain them as your followers and in time, you know, become your raving fans, then it is important to look into this non-verbal communication tool of image branding. Okay, now understanding how your image speaks will prevent you from self-sabotage. Not just self-sabotage, but sabotage, you know, your business sabotage. Are you sabotaging yourself? This is the question. So if you know that our image is a non-verbal communication, my next question is, are we communicating effectively? Okay. Um, so far, everyone okay? Are you following me? Okay, because if you are here, hoping me to share with you fashion and trends, what is the latest color of the year? What is the latest style that the uh, Hollywood celebrity is wearing? I'm so sorry, um, you know, uh, you're, you're in the wrong place, but, I'm going to share something that will change your life and I hope that changes your lives, okay? okay? So as the conclusion of my introduction part, this is your key takeaway. Your image is your message for the world to see. And I always advise my client to have this picture in their mind. See it this way. I give you a free advertisement billboard, a big one, you know, like those that you see on, uh, on your way to KLI. You get to advertise yourself on this big, billboard. 
advertise your brand. Advertise your brand message. Go design this billboard. What are you going to put on this billboard? What kind of image will you choose? What kind of colors will you choose? What, what forms best describe your personality and exudes your strength and the value that you offer? What are the, the you know, is there going to be a space in the billboard? Or oh, everything is colorful. Will there be a lot of curved lines or straight lines in the design? What are the color contrasts that you're going to use? Right? Does the whole design reflect your identity and your brand message? I mean, I can go on and on about design. I hope you get the picture. For an effective image branding, you need to see the holistic picture of what it is about. Now, in my image branding, I cover these five pillars. Okay? Just like constructing a building, you need a firm and strong foundation. And from there, you need to construct you know, uh, uh, you need to construct pillars to hold the structure. Likewise, in image branding. Let me introduce you these five pillars, right? First of all is you can't talk about image branding or the external image branding, how you look or the appearance without touching the identity. Who are you, right? First, you need to know who are you, the, the inside you. What makes you special? What makes you you? Right? What makes people want to follow you or want to, to be part of your cause that you fight for? Identity mastery. Once the inside is done, then we talk about outside. How do we craft an image on the outside that aligns with the identity? Level one and two is about you. Then we go to image branding is not all about you. It's about now bringing you to the society, your social influence. How can you bring what you, what, what, you know, your value to make the community a better place, to make the world a better place? Social influence. Level four, or pillar number four is digital impression. And finally, is emotional performance. I hope to go a little bit uh, deeper into that. Okay, so basically in uh, EIB, we, we help our clients to draw out this blueprint, right? Personal identity mastery, image presentation, social influence, digital impression, and emotional performance. Now, coming back to our, our title on the poster today. Stand up. Why stand up? Why I choose stand up? Because if you want to be seen in, in marketing, if you want to stand up, you want to be seen, stand out will do, right? You don't need to stand up. Notice here, stand up denotes an active, deliberate act. It is something active, it's not passive. Therefore, it is crucial if you want a mindset change, you need to be active. You need to take active control, okay? Because when we talk about creating impression, long gone are the days where people think that, oh, I can't control what people think of me. I can't control what, you know, what kind of impression people build in their mind of me. Now, today, I want to tell you this, that we can and we have full control of how we can create this impression in people's mind by tapping into the psychology of style, colors, psychology of rapport building, psychology of impression, okay? So the question is that, do you want to take full control or you want to give this control into people's hand and say, well, you create the impression of me, up to you, right? Stand up, you need, you and I, we need to stand up. We need to be, participate in crafting our impression. Then stand out. Okay, I'm going to share five secrets how to stand out. Um, of course, you know, during this, this short time, I can only create an overview, uh, a picture for you, but I hope, you know, one of these days, I will have more opportunity to go deeper into each of these uh, pillars. First is, remember, level one is your identity mastery. You need to create a powerful brand story of who you are. That's why just now I mentioned, why would people want you? What is so unique about you? 
what is unique about your past experience that makes you who you are, right? Your personality, your behavioral style, your gifts and talents. How to design strategies so that you can bring this story out for people to see. I always tell my, my uh, consultants and my team, I say, you know, people buy or people engage me as, uh, in, as their coach, not because my program is good. I mean, there are a lot of image consultants out there, image coaches out there that I equally admire and you know, respect them my fellow uh, colleague out there, they have amazing programs. My program is not special, but what makes me special is my story, what I have gone through in the past and how I, you know, from a, a victim, now I become a victor. What makes me special? What makes me so strong and bold and courageous? That is your brand story. What makes you, you? My story is uniquely mine. What is your story? Because ultimately in sales and marketing, we know that people buy not because of the product you have. People buy because of your story. So curate a powerful and authentic brand story. Tip number one. Tip number two. Now that you have your story, you need to design the packaging. It's like a product, okay? The substance and the quality is good like Rolex, now you need to design the packaging. That is tip number two, design your signature style. How can we understand the intentional dressing, the psychology of intentional dressing? How can we tap into psychology of style and design? What do I mean by psychology of style and design? If this is the first time that you are aware of this, right? Say for example, what does straight lines impress upon people? What does curved lines in your style, you know, uh, 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 means? Uh, psychology of design. Okay, let's say, you know, uh, in the past people are using, you know, all the gentlemen are using tie, but now work from home, you don't wear tie. But let's say, let's say, understand the psychology of a necktie. You have straight lines design and you have paisley designs. You have pocket out designs. You have plain designs. There are psychology behind all this and your necktie actually speaks on your behalf. So if you understand the psychology behind all these designs and colors and space, you no longer see a necktie as just a necktie. So in the morning, let's say if I'm meeting someone, if I know that I need to uh, uh, fulfill a certain uh, um, uh, purpose for the meeting, I will open my wardrobe and I will look around for garments and accessories that actually helps me to speak without me opening my mouth. So understanding the psychology of style, the colors, also understanding the psychology of personality styling. How do you dress up? Dressing up is just not following trends, you know? Like say for example, um, my personality, I, I'm, I'm more of the strong and you know, a, a rebel kind of uh, a person. Um, lace don't work for me. Floral designs doesn't work for me. It doesn't jive with who I am, okay? But dramatic styling, that's me. So how can we tap into the seven universal uh, personal, personality style and choose one that reflects who you are? Basically, we are here to talk about dress to express and not dressing to impress. Tip number two. Tip number three, now how can you reach out to people? Because if you look good, if you know who you are, you have substance and you have the packaging, but you doesn't reach out and build engagement with people. It's like, you know, I always remember this story about uh, uh, an old lady who has a 50 ringgit note, but she keep it under her, her, her pillow. Now, if I were to ask you, does the 50 ringgit note has value? Yes. But if you keep the 50 ringgit note under your pillow for five years, 10 years, and then after that, you, 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 you died and the 50 ringgit note is still under your pillow and no one knows about the 50 ringgit note, does it have any practical value? We are talking about practical value. I'm not talking about just face value. All of us have value. But do we have practical value that we can actually make a difference in people's life, in the community, in the world? 
you need to go out and increase your social influence. Develop skills to build engagement and rapport. Develop good sense of uh, social and, 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 and professional etiquette. How can you use your body language, learning about positive body language and uh, executive presence to build reputation and to build a team? Because ultimately, one is too little to make a big impact. We need a team of community like all of you here to make a bigger impact. Social influence. Tip number four. We cannot, especially now in this post-COVID era, we cannot not look into your digital impression. How do you, how do you appear on social media? What is your footprint, your social media footprint? When was the last time you did a digital impression wellness check? All of us go for hospital to check, you know, our health wellness uh, uh, medical checkup. When was the last time you did a digital impression wellness check? Ask your friends, ask your clients, hey, you know, log into my social media and, uh, you know, give me top three impression that you have. Be brave and ask for comments. How do people see and look at you on social media? How does your profile photo look like? Does it bring out that, that, that you know, identity of you, the strength in you? Uh, does it talk about your brand introduction, right? Uh, the contents and the identity alignment, is it aligned? Do you stand out on virtual meetings? Or, you know, nowadays on Zoom, you know, when we meet on Zoom, we have 50 people during the networking session. Does your screen stand out? Does your face stand out? Are you you know, using the, the, the skills and knowledge of using the con color contrast, digital impression. And final tip is, easy. In the past, I always hear, fake it till you make it, the kind of, you know, uh, uh, rules that, you know, you want to be as successful, you fake it, and eventually you'll make it. But um, in our current, digital media, we have enough of faking, all right? To be an effective leader and in order for your brand to stand long lasting, okay? That people not just impress for, for a short period of time, but they respect you no matter how long, right? You need to manage your emotional performance. How do you maintain a balance of heart, soul and mind and body, okay? Um, are you walking your talk and talking your walk? Are you maintaining a balance of life roles, husband, as a wife, as a father, as a mother, as a son, as a daughter? Right? Do you develop humility? The higher you grow, the more humble you need to be. Five important tips we need to look into. All right. So, um, not sure whether you know this, you only have seven seconds to create your first impression, whether you know face-to-face -face or on social media, on Zoom platform, whatever virtual platform, you only have seven seconds. So this seven seconds basically is the non-verbal communication, is the billboard that people see. How are you using these seven seconds? And I hope that you know uh, all of us are serious that we are here not just haphazardly, but we are here to make a mark. To make a mark even when we are no longer here on earth, making a mark is what our goal is in all image branding. So uh, thank you all. This is Elizabeth Ho, and I hope that, you know, for the past half an hour of sharing, I'm able to change your mindset to see image very differently. Right. Thank you so much. Wow, awesome, 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 Elizabeth, right? I think you, you, you personally opened my mind a little bit about the five uh, areas, the five image branding techniques and the tips. And especially the part where, you know, the final part where, where you talked about emotional, uh, the part of it, the emotional intelligence. And it's really not about how I look and feel, right? Or rather, it's not how I portray about what I wear, yeah. but it's really about how I portray how I feel inside. I can't be a, I can't, it can't push out a good personal brand if I'm not healthy, if I'm yeah. not emotionally healthy. Yeah. All right. So yes, it must... it's, Ray, it's very important. I mean, 
you know, in the past years, we have seen really good brands of whether it, it, it's a organizational brand, corporate brand, or, you know, personal brand. They are very impressive. The story that they created online, you know, in magazine, very impressive. They look good. They have the investment to spend on, you know, making sure that their styling is good and, you know, creating a very good impression. They even have money to spend on learning body language. So mm. from the aspect of level one to four, they are successful. But when stress comes, when temptation comes, when power sets in, when money sets in, you will see a lot of all these, you know, so-called reputable brand or famous brand collapse because mm. they fail to regulate their self-emotion. It is the emotional alignment that what makes your brands, you know, last long mm. and authentic. Right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions here. And you know, everybody, uh, we have about 30 minutes to this uh, session. So please ask questions with regards to how do you create a personal brand for yourself, perhaps? Uh, ask any questions that you want, put it in the chat window and also put it in the Q&A section. I can see it, Elizabeth can see it. So we will be here to answer your questions. I will start off first because I'm the one with the mic. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... So I, I want to rewind back a bit of history, lah, Elizabeth, if you if you allow me to. Yeah. So I mean you've been you've been doing this for a while. You've you've been in sales, you've been in marketing. What was your personal experience as in why why is this so important to you? I'm very interested to know. Why is this personal branding thing so important to you? Was there something that happened in the past or image branding? Yeah. Yeah. Is he um I like, you know, Ray, you know my story. I, 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 I ran away from uh, home. I was born and bred in KL. I, I basically ran away at the age of 19 from home. Um, now that I look back, it's uh, the best decision that I have made ever in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, reason was, you know, I was living in a very abusive uh, foster home and uh, I was badly, you know, physical, uh, mentally, uh, you know, uh, uh, even sexually abused for many, many years. And mm. I, I reached my breaking point and I ran away. So I, I couldn't take it anymore. And I bought a, a one-way ticket and ran away to Penang, mm. away from all those beating and abuse, you know. And I thought that was my key to freedom, key to new life. I didn't realize that even though I'm no longer staying in that house, I still suffer from abuse. Abuse of what was implanted in my head that I was not good enough, I was ugly, I am useless, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm meant for, not meant for greatness. So I struggle a whole big part of my adulthood with my self-image. Mm. Even though, even though, you know, I learned from, you know, magazine, you know, back in those times, you know, 1990s, and uh, you, you still have a, a female magazine, Cleo Harper Bazaar, to learn how to dress up so that, you know, you mask all the insecurities that you have. I learned everything. I spent so much to, you know, this, this outer appearance. And I realized at one point it, it, it wasn't working. Mm. So I asked myself, what, what, is, what am I not doing right? Then I realized it is just not about external branding, but it is really bringing, you know, bringing that whole five levels out mm. in order to, to, you know, brand yourself well. Because first is that forget about impressing other people, impress yourself first. So that, 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 that is why I, you know, I told myself, because I learned from this and I saw so many people, even men, you know, it's just not women, men also suffering from all this, you know, uh, limiting belief and then all these lies that we have implanted in, in them. And I told myself, I want to do this. I want to have, a, you know, help people to see, you know, from, from uh, a different perspective, what is true image. Right. Wow. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for being vulnerable, uh, Elizabeth, for sharing the story. I'm sure everyone appreciates that and they can, can look at the context. I think what you mentioned here is that I think it's, it's, not, only, it's not only women, right? It's, it's men as well. But let me go to a question here from uh, Amy, which is related to what you just said. 
so Amy, Amy Tan asked this question, as a woman in business, uh, is it necessary to wear makeup to appear professional? I love this question recently, uh, in, you know, in my inner circle, a man actually asked this question, you know, should men actually approach a makeup? Um, and in my, in my answer to him, it is not about necessity, it's not about should or should not, because if you feel driven that you need to or you should, then your whole mindset is wrong already. Mm. In order, Amy, in order to answer to your question, always ask this question. You see, whether it's a makeup, whether it's, uh, it's any dressing or garment or, you know, colors, should I wear colors? I love black, you know, I hate colors, but should I wear colors? All these questions boils down to, does makeup helps you to communicate your brand image? It's all about, you know, communicating your brand image effectively. If makeup does not help, don't make up. But if makeup helps, then learn makeup. Same here. Try use colors if colors help. Use colors, right? But if let's say if I'm I'm you, you will see me, you know, uh, if for those people who are following me and knows me well, you know that I seldom use colors because. Black really brings out my message. Black brings out my strength. Black brings out the, 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 the color contrast in me, you know, the boldness in me and the authenticity in me because really strong. I don't use colors, mm. all right? Even though I'm a color consultant and I, I teach people, you know, color is very important. There's a lot of psychology, but you know, I, I seldom use colors. So the question still boils back down to what is your message and what are the elements that helps. You see, it's a non-verbal communication tools. It's the tools. Makeup is a tool. Mm. Dressing is a tool. Colors are tools. Is it related to kind of how it makes you feel? So you wear, you wear black because it brings out your, your strength, your, your true personality. <laughs> I know I, I've seen you in black. I've seen you in very bold red. Yeah, yeah. My colors are very bold. Uh, yeah. Is it... All of these uh, tools that we use, whether it's a makeup, you know, uh, colors, uh, garment, you know, it has energy. And whatever we use has to jive with our internal energy and brings out that, you know. Um, especially ladies, maybe guys are not so, you know, sensitive about all, all this energy. But ladies, let me ask you. Sometimes you feel like you're on top of the world. Right. And sometimes you feel like you hardly can pass, you know, uh, lunchtime. It's like, oh, it's so draggy. It's so tired. It's so, it's so, you know, it's so heavy. Could it be because of the colors, certain colors that just drains your energy? All right. So everything that we use and put on us, it has energy. Okay. Uh, so I hope that explains, you know, I hope that answers to your question, Amy. Ask yourself, does makeup accentuate my message and you know helps me to convey what i want to convey to the public or to the, mm. the person that i'm meeting clearly mm. okay thanks thanks elizabeth and this goes to the next question that is uh, related to what christine Liu is asking mm. so knowing that do we okay so as a business owner right men or women mm -hmm. do we project uh do you project yourself as the entrepreneur or do you project the entity that you represent? <laughs> Very good question. Because it's a personal yeah. branding thing, right? So, so am, I, am I just marketing myself or am I, should I be marketing my company? Yeah. You see, Ray, uh, and also to Christine, yeah, it has to be in alignment. If the message or, or the purpose or the value of your company doesn't align with your identity, then I have a very big question. Why are you in this industry? You see? Mm. Remember your identity? People buy because of what you stand behind the brand. I share with you, people buy my, my you know, uh, image branding uh, program or coaching, not because my program is good, but because of the person behind it the reason I do what I do. So when it comes to image branding, ultimately it is about 
who you are behind the, the entity, right? But your entity and you has to, in alignment, has to be a one package itself, right? I hope that, that explain, uh, uh, mm. answer to your question. Yeah. I think we just have to find our, like what you said, going back to the first, first, uh, first tip, right? Mm. The, the identity. We, we have to really know ourselves and what do we stand? And then, then we can bring that also to the company, yeah. right? Yeah. Which goes back to another question here uh, from an anonymous person. We, we don't know who is this. Uh, so is there, any, is there a specific target of people to market our personal brand? Well, who are you marketing to? Mm. Is it, uh, again, you know, your, your uh, level two of personal appearance uh, uh, mastery has to be also in alignment to your brand image goal. When I talk about brand image goal, it's like a business um, model canvas like that. Okay, um, uh, all of you are, you know, or most of you are in uh, as a business owner, you are familiar with business model canvas. That means what is the front end, what is the back end, and who are your target market? Brand image is the same. Who are you reaching out to? Because let's say if I'm reaching out to children, and I brand myself outwardly so strong and you know fierce and and authoritative. It run won't away. work. It won't work. They will run away. They was like, oh, mom, don't send me to that school. You know, I'm so scared of, of of teacher Elizabeth. You know, this kind of thing. So you see, everything, all these five levels, your identity, how you brand yourself, and you know who are you reaching out to, has to be basically you know in the same direction, same alignment. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we can't, very we, important. Yeah, we can't take one aspect out of the whole thing. It's like, you know, oh, this is me. But then business-wise, you know, uh, we, are, we are doing different things. It, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. yeah. And it goes back down to also the whole uh, targeting and focus because we can't also create a personal brand that will, that will please everybody. Yes, correct. Right? Correct, yeah. yeah. Yeah, say for example, um, uh, I have... Uh, constantly you know get this uh, uh comments from my team is like hey my uh, you know there are some people who, who commented that you look very fierce um i need to be fierce. i mean i'm not fierce i'm very friendly i'm really a nice person but You're very friendly, I'm ma. Friendly. yeah i'm friendly ma you know but people who do not know me and i don't get to uh the, have the opportunity to to speak and and introduce myself they will perceive me as someone really strong you know like iron lady and i I actually want that, that brand because of uh, what I'm doing, because of the people that I want to attract, right? I need to be at a position where people see me as credible and no nonsense kind of thing. I'm serious in my work. I'm serious with your image brand. So you can see from, from, from the whole, you know, uh, persona and presence. Mm. But okay. You know, my, my, my branding and my style might not work for you if you're from a different industry. So you need to look from all these aspects. Put, you know, your, your identity, put your branding goals, put your business alignment, your team alignment, everything on this canvas and say, okay, now look at it as a, a big whole canvas and see how to align all these aspects together. Mm. Okay, cool. Now, so... Moving a little bit deeper, there's a question here from Penny Pang. Uh, then, do you brand yourself according to occasions? Um, no, my branding is constant because you cannot change your brand, all right? Yeah. Uh, but the way I style myself, I may change uh, and alter my uh, styling in accordance to the purpose of the event, the people that are meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it has to be at the right time uh, for the right occasion with the right people, with the right, mm. you know, uh, uh, purpose basically. Yeah. So, so uh, say for example, if I am going, you know, giving a talk um, in an auditorium or in a conference and I'll be on the stage, I need to style, you know, more authoritative. Uh, compared to, let's say, if I'm going for a, a social gathering or networking, I may not style myself so uh, high contrast or so strong, 
okay? I want to blend in uh, and, and basically create more rapport with people. So I will use a psychology of style and uh, the accessories in my wardrobe according to what I want to achieve. Mm. But it's like going back to what you said, right? It's not just the colors you wear. It's, it's not the clothes that you wear. It's really, if you, are, you have to be consistent with regards to how you talk to people, how you Correct. communicate, right? Yeah. How you address people, you know, regardless of occasion, that doesn't change. Yeah, right? your brand and your identity should not change because mm. if you fluctuate in your brand or your identity, your target market or the people that you want to reach the, the, the public will be confused. Like, who are you? You know, your tone of voice constantly change. And then, you know, your, your behavior and your personality constantly change. It doesn't work. Mm. Okay. Okay, interesting. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Christine, for noticing that gray really suits Ray. Okay, I just had to read out that comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's go back to the serious questions. Uh, so there's a question here from anonymous person, um, does creating a propaganda also called branding? Uh, what do you mean by propaganda? Yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, whoever that asked the question, if you can be a bit more elaborate on yeah. this question, right? Uh, we'll be happy to answer this question for you, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. thinking that this creating propaganda means constant message, the same message over and over again, like brainwashing, right? that's propaganda, right? Um, is that called branding? But anyway, let's wait for the person to clarify. I don't want to be answering the wrong We don't want to be answering the wrong correct, question. Correct. Let's go to the next question by Imran Clyde. Uh, so he's asking from a perspective of an introvert. Right? Because a lot of us, okay, not everybody is very comfortable about being upfront and being, being, being showing themselves, right? Even some of us, some people don't even like to do social media. Hmm. So for an introvert, what's the best way to develop our personal brand? And is there a difference? whether you're introvert or extrovert? Well, when I, when I talk about uh, personal branding or image branding, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter whether you're introvert and extrovert. It's just that the strategy is different. If you're an extrovert, uh, you may be more uh, visible, right? Mm. Uh, and, and you may be a little bit more, you know, I always use loud and silent kind of branding. So perhaps, you know, we will, we will want you know, a, a louder kind of uh, image branding. But for extrovert, you still need to image brand yourself. It is like, basically, if you understand image branding well, is that how can you bring yourself out to reach out? Basically, it's like, it is, you are here and the people that you want to reach is here. And there's a, there's a, a big gap. Image branding is, or personal branding, is the building the bridge to allow you to reach your target group as well as allowing this public this mass to also reach out to you so whether you're extrovert introvert we need this bridge it's just that it's just the strategy is different so perhaps mm. this is a little bit more silent kind of image branding uh you can use say for example uh what are you good at that's why it's, it's still easy we still go back to your identity what is your strength yeah do you express well in blogs? Right, all right. Um, do you express well in, in um, yeah, it, it still go back to how do you express well? Ex extrovert has their own way of expression and introvert has their own way of expression. Find out that and then look into strategy, how to bring this expression or your strength into bridging the gap. Mm. Okay, yeah. So you, you don't need, you know, extroverts really hate, you know, when, when in the past, when we have a face-to-face -face, uh, corporate training, I can actually see their face on the first day, within the first hour when I introduce myself and they are, they are forced to attend my, my training, you know, oh. forced by management to attend, no choice, you know. Don't call, yeah. me, don't call me, don't call me. <laughs> yeah, don't call me and then no choice have to attend and then give me a, 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 a really hot face of, you know, why am I here to learn? image consulting, I don't even bother about, you know, and, and you can see from their face. But once they see the, the, the different perspective of bringing out their value for people to see, you don't have to be loud. Mm. You just need to understand, you know, what, what 
it is that strength or uniqueness or signature brand that you have. And then, you know, brand it introvertly, introvert kind of branding. Okay, so I, I'll put it extrovert branding and introvert branding. Mm, but okay. you still need branding. Yeah, I, I, I believe the solar because we as business owners, especially for those of you who are business owners here that's listening today, I think this is very important because I think in today's era of the internet, the social media, like it or not, everybody ties your company to you. So if you, if you are not pro- projecting the right brand, mm-hmm. then it does affect our company as well. Which goes to the next question I wanted to ask you. And also it's the same question that Christine is asking, Christine Liu is asking. So what about our teams? So, okay. So as business owners, we kind of get it. We kind of know that we got to, we got to make sure that this personal branding thing is very important to us. How do we convince our teams that this is just as important for them? You see, um, when we talk about team, first is that uh, we have to get to the root of the problem, especially entrepreneurs, business owners. When we recruit our team, we have to find, um, you know, people that actually share the same calling. Because ultimately, if you hire based on affordability, because they are cheap to hire, um, these are not the people that can actually bring um, potentials in your business. Mm. Do you agree with me? Yes. I mean, I mean I, I'm it's, a business it's, it's not a line, right? It's, there's no it's alignment. Not a line, you know. So, so as a business owner, I, I, I see, you know, uh, building team in two, two ways. One is I hire you because I can afford you, you know, you are affordable. Or, hire, or I, I hire you because we share the same calling or, or, you know, the same direction. So if you hire from the latter, automatically say for example my team i don't have to tell them to dress dress up or you know look into their aesthetic because they share the same calling they share the same ideal ideal you know uh, mm. idealism so and also say for example it is also possible um, if you were to hire people that initially don't share the same uh, uh, calling as you are or the values or the purpose as you are, if you as a business owner, you have the the, uh, uh, strength to impress upon them that this is important, I don't see how your team will not embrace this uh, uh, the, the, you know the, the, the same the same uh, alignment mm. so I, I, I'm not sure you know this 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 helps uh, a Christine to to see it that way so but of course you know yeah. in, in in the current uh, business world uh, the bigger the organization grow we realize that you know some of your employees don't share the same calling and mm. this is where you know uh, we we face so much problem with HR. <laughs> Yeah. I think it trickles down now, right? Yeah, because ultimately it is, it is if they want money and not really bringing up, you know, meeting your mission and vision, you have more problems in the long yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally advocate that. I always talk about uh, purpose. I always talk about um, um, aligning of values and things like that. And, uh, you know, this is, this is what we talk about also in Authentic Lives, right? It's really yeah. about authenticity. Which is which brings me down to the next question, and we 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 are almost to the hour, and we have a couple. Hour. I want to ask the last couple of questions. So nowadays, the younger generation, I see them in the social media, they are they're always more real, right? So yeah. they portray a lot of a lot of their realism, right? So they they take videos of them just waking up, or you know they 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 just very freely uh, release some vulgar languages. Right. Um, uh, some people say that it's good, it's authentic. Okay. Right? <laughs> but but I'm 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 personally failing to I'm failing to see the realism or authenticism to personal branding. Do we do we I, I don't know whether that's the right thing to do. I I I need I need your, your thoughts on this. <laughs> um I also struggle because I have a 20-year-old son. <laughs> because you got um, I, you got I, you you got you got him when you were you pregnant when you were sixteen, is it? <laughs> I love him. Um, I, 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 I
love you, Ray. <laughs> I have a 20 year old son and um, I mean, you know, I, I, I thank the Lord that he's very, very supportive of my uh, uh, career as an image consultant and brand strategist. Mm. But very often, you know, he will say, mom, you leave me alone. Okay, I am my own brand and my brand is just simple and dirty and, you know, uh, uh, come as I am, that kind of thing, you know. So, you know, in the past, we go to church and I say, hey, dress up, wear shoe, you know, and match and stuff like that. Is it mom? You know, so I totally understand. Now, when we talk to uh, the younger generation, there's nothing wrong in, you know, bringing out the individualism of, you know, uh, uh, who you are. Mm. They, they, they really look into being authentic. You see everything, okay? Yeah. I have nothing to hide. And this I is me, love, right? Nothing really. Yeah, this yeah. is me, okay? Um, and I love that. I love that you know, uh, courage and bonus to be real. But I have one question. If being real promotes your brand and promotes your career, promotes your life, be real. Let's say if you are a TikToker, you are a full-time TikToker, and that is all you do, then be real, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if you are a, a YouTuber, you know, and, and it pays you to be real, to show every uh, hour of your life on social media, show that because that pays. But let's say if you're working in an environment where you're working with um, baby boomers, you're working with exes like us, you're working with more traditional uh, 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 organization, it may not pay, mm. right? It may not pay to, to be real. I mean, that's why I say, you know, you have to look at the environment. Does it promote that but I'm not asking you to fake it. I'm not asking you to create another brand for people to see. But it's just that you be real, but then at the same time, look into how to connect with people. Because if you're not connecting with your boss, if you're not connecting with uh, 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 the customers that comes from this more conservative group, you may have to leave the organization and go to another organization, right? Yeah. So ultimately is you know, what, what environment are you in? Mm. Okay, does it pay to be real? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you to, as I said, you know, don't, don't be fake at the same time. Yeah, okay, yeah. you be real and say that, you know, okay, I'm, I'm not faking it, but I realize I need to up level a little bit to reach to all these traditional people in my organization. So out of respect, you see, it's not about faking. It is about taking effort to respect the people around me or the senior around me. So, okay, I just wear a little bit nicer. Hmm. But are you okay. still you? Yes, you are still you. And it goes back down to what you said, like, right? You have to understand the, the target market. Who are you portraying it to? And yeah. what is this brand that you want to portray in terms of the image, right? Mm. So, Elizabeth, uh, we're coming to, we've already uh, reached the one hour and, you know, I have so many questions for you and there's many questions. So, I want to be able to answer some of these questions here. So, very quickly, there's a question here. Is there any good books that you can recommend with regards to personal branding? Is there any one book? Um... You know what, everybody, the book is go and talk to Elizabeth Image. <laughs> yeah, talk That's to why you want to read books. Okay. But um uh one book that left a good impression on me is uh if I'm not mistaken, is um who's the author? Donald Miller, clarify ah. your message so yes. customer will listen. Okay, so I think the title is Building a Building a Story Brand. Donald yes, Miller. yes, build a story brand. <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can do that. You see, why I love this, this, this book is that it is about reaching out to people and make people mm. listen to you. It's not about self. You see, um, if image branding is all about self, it's like, you know, the, the younger generation that you mentioned, Josh, is about, it's all about me, me, me. But if in an environment it's about people, then you have to take effort to make people listen to you. Mm. All right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, Don, Don In, Incidentally, Miller. I just had a webinar with Don Miller last night. Really? <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just, I'm just listening to him last night. There are, there are a lot of other books, mm. but 
you know, I always remember this book because it, it taught me or it opened my eyes to see branding is not about self. Mm. Yes, it's self-empowerment, but you empower yourself for what? So that people listen to you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, final question here from Christine before I ask you a very important question next. Uh, she has a company which 99.9% male. Okay. How do I brand to them? I'm thinking, must brand strong. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, Christine, um, as a branding strategist, first of all, I need to understand your industry. I need to understand, you know, what is the goal, uh, a mission and vision, right? So all this, because you're talking about corporate uh, uh, and also individual alignment, uh, I need to understand from that aspect first. Then mm -hmm. only, you know, I, I will be able to give you tips on how to convince the male to brand himself. Mm -hmm. Because when you're talking about male, it's not about looking good. They don't give, you know, uh, <laughs> anything, okay, about looking good. To them, it's like, hey, I have substance. I'm Most of them don't care, right? Yeah, I don't care, you know. Uh, as long as I can, I can bring in, you know, the sales, I meet my KPI. So what, what are you so bothered about my, my, my appearance? But you need to come from the other aspect of why. Mm. Once the gentleman understand how and why your, their image brands will increase their profit by double, then they will. Mm. Mm. Okay. And and is and there is a relation, right? If you if you have a good personal brand, especially people who are frontliners or the sales, it does it will affect your sales. Which comes to my last question. Elizabeth. Your image, you know, your image, yeah. actually, if you look at it, your appearance or your image is mm. is a tool that you already have that can 10 times your profit. So I always use this uh, you know, profit set profitize your image mm. because left, right, center, we are spending so much to bring in the profit. But here you are, you have this ready-made, you know, uh, tools that you have. All you need to do is just understand the psychology behind it. Then you can bring in, you know, double up your, your, your sales, you know, double up your revenue and, and, and you know, be more productive in your business. Yeah. Especially in this world of social media and internet today. La. Elizabeth, um, final question for you. For those that are listening today, if they want to get to know about personal uh, branding, further from a consultancy perspective or just learning from you, how, how can they do that? How can they dive deeper into this topic? Okay. Uh, hit me up on uh, LinkedIn, you know, Facebook, get in touch with me because each individual's uh, need for or you know approach or strategies for image branding is very diff different so that's why i never like to give a template like okay this is what you do you know because what works for ray may not works for christine what works for uh josh may not works for uh, uh Wei Yi. so um get in touch with me uh and also you know in elizabeth image branding in my team we have a program image branding uh, program that designed for individuals, uh, limitless influence. So get to know us. And um, we recently, because of the COVID, we recently pivoted into um, inner circle learning where we offer unlimited inner circle image branding related topics, unlimited learning. So um, wow. get in touch with me and uh, I'll tell you more about uh, inner circle membership. Awesome, awesome. Elizabeth, I want to say a very big thank you uh, for sharing tonight, right? Uh, on a Friday night, right? Um, about, about this. And, you know, to be a very, I'm very grateful that you are very open and sharing all these uh, tips, the five tips. Uh, and I hope that these tips have been uh, useful for everybody that's listening here uh, tonight, uh, right? Last, before we go, what should we do immediately next? What should we do immediately next? Hmm. Spend some time tonight. Come up with your brand message. Who are you? Mm. Because don't even bother about external, you know, how to reach out to people, whatever. Who are you? You answer that question. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Because that is the foundation. If you want to build solid building or solid personal brand, your brand message is the foundation. Okay? Okay. 
So who are you, everybody? Who are you? Are you? <laughs> Figure that out tonight, and then you will start your your journey on this personal brand. If anybody, you guys need to go into deeper with this, please contact Elizabeth Image Branding. Right, as she said, uh, she also has an Inner Circle program. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. I hope that this has been a good Friday night for you. Have a great weekend, Elizabeth. Thank you once again for joining us here at Owner Circle. And last thing, for those of you who are here, we want to just share with you just a bit of housekeeping before we leave. Um, the, the next session is going to be this. If you just look at the next session, uh, it's going to be on the 30th of uh, July. Right? Uh, can we have the slide up? Do we have the slide up? No, we don't. Okay, never mind. So on the 30th of July, we will have another session and it's going to be about how we how the new retail works in China. So on the 30th of July, you want to turn in, tune in to this, uh, right, with these two, uh, Kenny and, uh, and we have we invited Kenny and Kenny, right, uh, to talk about really what can we learn from China's new retail? They've written a book and they're going to be coming here to also share these uh, thoughts with you guys. So thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in. I hope that you have a great weekend. Please join us on the 30th of July again and stay with us here at Owner Circle. Thank you very much. Have a good night.